welcome to the Law of Attraction video series, part one. Uh, in this video series, I'm simply going to be uh, helping us to restructure our view of the Law of Attraction from what is very commonly a dualistic understanding of it. Um, the idea that here I am over here and there is the universe out there or over there and I have to petition and do affirmations and post sticky notes and things like that, rub my magic genie lamp and to get what I want from it. And so I want to reframe it from that kind of common misunderstanding and give it a true um, non-dualistic understanding because the truth is that you are the universe. So therefore you are the law of attraction as well. Um, but what does that mean for our experience of it? So in this video, I want to talk about the idea of love as zero entropy. And I'll explain what that means in a minute. But the basic idea is that even though we cannot um, measure or weigh or taste or touch or feel physically this thing we call love, um, we cannot deny that it is the most real thing in our experience. And so even if we, uh, you know, we have the, the technology now through science to investigate the things that we call real, these things we call matter, the chairs or the tables behind me, for example. And we can zoom in now at the quantum level to see, hey, what is this stuff that we call real actually made out of? And all we actually find are these sort of buzzing particles of light which disobey all of the laws of Newtonian physics. And they travel from A to B without traveling the distance. Um, you know, they, they, their behavior seems to show that there are no boundaries or um, distance or there is some sort of connectedness of all these things um, which would imply no space-time and all these bizarre things. So we start to go, okay, whoa. Uh, we have to redefine what we mean when we say real, the word real. But at the same time, even the most um, materialistic atheistic, nihilistic, skeptically minded person um, still loves their children, right? Would still give their life for their children or their parents or anyone they truly love. Um, so we see that even though we cannot taste, touch, or measure this thing at all, in any way, everyone still comes to worship at the altar of love. And that is because the universe is made out of love. And so I want to talk about what that means. Um, but when we when we use this idea of entropy, uh, entropy is a term from thermodynamics, which is actually really complicated. <laughs> but a simple definition of it would be uh, the lack of order or the lack of predictability in any given system. So if we look at the universe as a given system, we can see that it is clearly built towards going from a state of high entropy to low entropy, going from chaos to order, um, finding the lowest possible entropy. So, for example, um, the, the obvious example would be a star exploding in a supernova. It spews its gas and dust out into the cosmos. Chaos, high entropy, right? But that gas and dust eventually coalesces with gravity into a new solar system and new planets and new life. And so the creation game just keeps following this pattern forever. And so even the chaos, the seeming chaos, is still a form of order. Um, so following this idea, we see that this force that creates the universe must itself be a zero entropy. It must have no instability, no, nothing missing, uh, no chaotic element in it. Um, because if it, if it was chaotic or unstable or incomplete, missing something in any way, it could not create an orderly manifest physical universe because you cannot create chaos you cannot create order unless you first have order. You must have it in order to create it. Um, the universe would simply just keep collapsing in on itself. So this energy is one energy and it is connected with itself, right? It is the only thing that actually exists. So when it creates, the, when it dreams, projects, whatever word you want to use for it, the physical universe, it, it inhabits the physical forms it creates in order to experience itself, its universe, its dream from every possible vantage point, to have every possible experience of itself, each unique lens. And that is what you are doing right now. You are the universe experiencing itself. And so when this is felt from person to person or thing to thing, object to object, in physical form, it is felt as what we call love. 
And this, this feeling of love is nothing more than the recognition of consciousness of itself, the recognition of oneness, of we are made of the same stuff, which is why you want to, you would give your life for someone you love without even questioning it, right? And this makes no evolutionary sense. This is, this is outside of the Darwinian mode. There's no, there's no evolutionary advantage to giving your life for someone you love. Um, it's survival of the fittest. It's fight to get to the top, right? Everyone, every man for himself. And so this goes against seemingly the created order because it is the, cre it is the one that creates the created order. And so when we follow this idea of love being what the universe is made out of, we start to wonder, well, then why do I feel fear and things that are opposite from love? Um, but that's simply because according to the law of polarity, for anything to have any observable or experiential quality to it, um, it has to have an opposite. It has to have contrast. So black needs white, up needs down, left needs right. And so love needs something else opposite from it in order to experience it as love. And so fear is simply just an illusion. It is simply just the distancing away from love energy. Um, and it is only possible to do that through an illusion, a, a trick of the mind, a lie, a thought you must believe in. Um, fear always depends on a thought in order to exist. And so does any of the manifestations of fear energy, such as anger, insecurity, depression, pride, etc. These all depend on a thought in order to exist. And you can prove this to your own experience right now. If I say, I want you to allow fear to arise in your being, or something easier, anger. I want you to let anger arise in your being right now, but you cannot use a single thought to do it. You cannot think about anyone or anything at all. You must have a completely empty mind and no thoughts and just allow anger to arise. You find that you can't do it. But on the other hand, this is why we love to meditate because when the thinking mind is silenced and the, the power of the thinking mind is drained of energy, through meditation, through intense concentration, um, what do we feel? We feel this tremendous bliss, this, this vastness, this, this joy that is, it's an uncaused joy. Uh, this, this love energy is radiating from the inside out and it is not depending on anything. It is not being caused by a thought. There is no logical reason for it to be there. Um, you can't ask a mother, why do you love your child? Give me a logical answer why you love your child so much. Um, she can't give you a reason, right? Anything that she says of why she loves her child, um, it's, it's because of this reason. Well, it feels immediately like a betrayal. You know, I don't love you because of that reason. There's nothing you could do that would make me stop loving you. I don't know why I love you. I can't tell you why I love you. I just love you, right? So it is shining by itself. It is self-sufficient. Um, whereas fear energy is not self-sufficient. It must rely on a thought in order to exist. So the way this ties into the law of attraction is if it feels good, that's because it's true. That's because it's in resonance. It's in alignment with the way the universe actually is. And if it feels bad, if it feels negative, if it diminishes you, if it causes you to feel more contracted, that's because it's not true. You are, it is the universe's way of telling you that you are out of alignment with what is real. You are believing in something that isn't true about your true nature, about yourself. And so, when you are asking the universe to give you something, the real question is, are you in love with it, right? Are you passionate about it? Um, because if you are passionate about it, if it's something that causes you to feel alive, to, to feel more expansive, uh, to feel joyful, um, you are in alignment with what's real. And so you're on the fast track to getting there, right? We all know this to be true. Nobody even would pretend to deny it. <laughs> Someone who's passionate about something is gonna become really good at it, right? That's why we love to watch American Idol. We love, we love to watch people suck and laugh at them, of course, and watch Simon, you know, tear him to pieces. But what we really love is when the shy girl gets up on stage and the music comes on and she just transforms into this dynamic performer, right? And she gets lost in the music and we, we see the immense talent she has and uh, we feel it in her voice and, and we see it on her face. And what do we do? We stand up and give a thunderous ovation and we cry and we share it on Facebook and it gets 50 million views on YouTube. <laughs> That's because we all love 
passion and love and seeing someone follow their passion because we're recognizing what we really are. So ask yourself a couple of key questions. Am I in love with this thing I'm asking for? Because you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not against um, affirmations or posting sticky notes all over your wall to remind you of thinking about this thing you want or whatever. But at the same time, it might be a red flag of, am I really in love with this thing? You know, because if, if you're in love with somebody, does anyone have to remind you to think about the one you're in love with? How can you forget, right? It's all you can think about. And uh, we say our thoughts create our reality. You know, you, you attract what you think about the most. Well, then when you're in love with something, it's all you think about, right? And so you're going to attract it that much quicker. And so if you aren't in love with it, um, ask yourself, is it an egoic thing? Is it a prideful thing? Am I, am I asking the universe for this out of an ego reason? Because if you are, then you're just going to waste a lot of time because the universe can't flow through ego energy because the ego doesn't exist. It's just an illusion of the mind. Uh, the universe can only flow through that which does exist, which is love energy. Um, and so that's all I wanted to cover for this first topic. But um, I think that this is really the most foundational thing for us to really get a hold of in order to understand what this thing is that we call the law of attraction and how it works. Um, but in the next video, we're going to talk about um, what is time, what is our experience of time, and how does that relate to the law of attraction. So we'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.